まあ、うん、だから、そうそうよく、うん、だから、そうそうそう。Hey, Shalom is our most high in Christ. Bless. We'd have been tossed out twice, so I'm hoping um, I hope we have no issues. We get Israel a moment to log on, and then we're going to get started. Third try. That are built with Ethernet cable. You got like an Ethernet port in every room that runs from that one room.、Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can plug anything like right into your wall. Like they, like you gotta bring them out with it. They gotta rip Yeah.、Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, expensive houses. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. All right, so <clears throat> today's topic is going to, it's called the, uh, The blame game and the unruly multitude. The blame game and the unruly multitude. All right. So let me sign this form. All right. So、uh, many times in Israel, Um, what you see is that we are nothing but a reflection of what has already been by our forefathers. We're a reflection of the scriptures. Whether it be good, whether it be bad, we all have a part to play. You know, and one thing that's notorious for Israel is the pointing of the finger. One thing that's, that's notorious for Israel is putting all,、um, all hurt, all pain, all torment that comes、uh, in the way of us as individuals on somebody else. You know, Whether it be、um, the brother next to you, whether it be the sister next to you, or whether it even be leadership. We see that time and time again. And, and it's biblical. Let's start off with Ecclesiastes 1. Ecclesiastes 1, we'll start at verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse 9.、Mm -hmm. The thing that hath been,、mm -hmm. it is that which shall be.、Mm -hmm. And that which is done is that which shall be done. So it says the thing that have been, it is that which shall be. And those things which have been done is that which shall be done. Nobody is doing anything new. I know a lot of y'all think y'all are very, very special. A lot of y'all think y'all are creating new things and 
Y'all are the best things since sliced bread and peanut butter and jelly. But in fact, you are nothing but a reflection of what has already been done. You do nothing but say things that have already been said. You know, nothing, nothing about you is new. Your personality is not new. Your, uh, your swag, your drip is not new. Your sarcasm ain't new. Those things have already been done. They have been done of old time. And you do nothing but repeat those same things. Whether you evil or good, that spirit has, is already located in this Bible somewhere. So it's talking about us when it says that. For example, get uh, Ecclesiastes 6. It's letting us know that nothing about us is new. Nothing about us um, is, is shocking to the most high. Ecclesiastes 6 and 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 10. Mm. That which hath been is named already. It says that which hath been, which we just got from Ecclesiastes 1. It says it's named already. Come on. And it is known that it is man. It says it's, it's who? It is man. It is man. You understand? So the spirit of man has been already. The doings of man have been already. Um, all these things have been done before. You understand? Now, for example, I'm, I'm going to show you how that spirit of, of blaming and being spiritually unruly, you understand, is a constant theme throughout this Bible, you understand, and is also being played out to this very moment, you understand, it's very, very easy um, to blame and point the finger, you know, point the finger is the same as um, you looking out the window and seeing everything wrong with your society, everything wrong with your neighborhood, but you never turn around and look into the mirror and say everything is wrong with yourself and what part you played in the destruction of that neighborhood and the destruction of that society. So let's get Genesis 3. Genesis 3, we're going to start at verse 6. Um, Brother Zariah, I really appreciate that. Let's get Genesis 3, and I'll start at verse 6. Genesis chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, mm -hmm. and a tree to be desired to make one wise, mm -hmm. she took of the fruit thereof mm -hmm. and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, mm. and he did eat. Okay, so both of the, both of them, the husband and the wife, uh, transgressed. This is a complete dismissal of God's laws. Both of them knew better. They understood the law. They were taught the law. She even she she even quoted the law to the uh, the spirit of Satan, and told him what the law said: "Thou shalt eat of every tree of good, but the tree of knowledge of good and evil." Thou shalt, she quoted the law verbatim. She was a quoting sister. You understand? Adam knew the law. Why? Because Adam was a teacher of the law. But what happened when it all boils down? Both of them individually completely transgress, a complete dismissal of what this Bible says. So now let's read on. Verse 7. Mm. And the eyes of them both were open, mm. and they knew that they were naked, mm. and they sewed fig leaves together mm. and made themselves aprons. Read. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Mm. And Adam and his wife hid themselves. They did what? Hid themselves. They hid themselves. So now all of a sudden... They, they completely dismissed God's laws and did their own thing, but now they want to hide themselves. So now all of a sudden, the, the authoritative figure is in place, and all of a sudden they're ashamed. So read on. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, mm -hmm. Where art thou? What do you say? Where art thou? So now, so now they've transgressed, so now God is seeking him. Now God is seeking Adam, right? So read on. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, mm -hmm. and I was afraid, because I was naked. He said what? I heard thy voice in the garden. He said, I heard your voice, come on. And I was afraid. And your voice made me afraid. The most high is seeking him. You understand? So he said, so what just happened? Adam transgressed. Eve transgressed. They hid themselves out of shame and fear. Now... The Most High is coming. And then what did Adam say again? Read that again. And Ten. he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, mm -hmm. and I was afraid, mm -hmm. because I was naked, mm -hmm. and I hid myself. So your voice is what scared me. It's not the fact that I know that I'm out of order. It's not the fact that I know I just transgressed. Me and my wife in the Garden of Eden, in paradise, I'm filled with immortality, but I chose death. That's not the problem. You understand? The problem is it, it's your voice. You're too scary. You're too scary. and and. Uh, I, I, I hid myself. I, I was afraid. E immediate deflection. Not wanting to deal with the issue at hand. You understand? Oh, it, it's your approach. It's your voice. That's, that's Israel today. Read 10 again. And he said, I heard thy voice mm -hmm. in the garden, mm -hmm. and I was afraid, mm -hmm. because I was naked, and I hid myself. Read. And he said, 
Who told thee that thou was naked? Let's deal with the matter at hand. Who told you she was even naked in the first place? You're not just going to skip around it. That's what Israel likes to do. Israel likes to um, Israel likes to deflect, use diversions. Israel don't like to deal with that matter at hand. Uh, you the reason why I hit myself. It's because I'm scared. Not the fact that I transgress. Let's not deal with my transgressions. Let's deal with the fact that you're, that you're too scary. Let's deal with the fact that, that I'm naked. No, we're going to deal with the fact that how you even know you was naked in the first place. What have you been exposed to? What have you been dabbling in? Read on, watch this. Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Mm -hmm. And the man said, the woman. Hold on, what did he say? The woman. So now he says, no, it's the woman, read. Whom thou gavest to be with me. It's the First of all, it's the woman who you gave. He blaming everybody. He bugging out at this point. Bugging out. Typical Israelite. Every, everybody get thrown under the bus. The moment any attention gets put on anybody in Israel, everybody is under the bus now. Bus going full, full, 100 miles an hour. Anytime, look, you out of order, you get caught up in something, um, you ain't right, or somebody brings you, well, I'm going to tell you right now, this brother right here reading for me, he ain't always been right. <laughs> and he, he had a big effect on me. That That's what Israel do. Every, everybody gets it. Guess what? Israel got respected persons until it come to point the finger. Now, when it come to point the finger, Israel don't got no respected persons. Everybody gets it. It don't matter. Top to the bottom, to the newest brother, to the newest, everybody gets it. That's the only time Israel don't got respected persons. Read that again. And the man said, mm -hmm. the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, uh -huh. she gave me of the tree. She gave me of the tree. It's her fault. Wicked ass. Come on. And I did eat. And then and then I ate. So, you, you know, um, you know, you minimize your own transgression. That's what we do as a people. We, we minimize ourselves and we magnify everybody else's transgression. It's not me. It's it's her. And then also you 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 as the Most High uh, God, you you play a big part in that because you gave it to me. I just want you know I know you know all things in the end from the beginning, but I just want to just leave a footnote just in case that wasn't in your notes, you know, in the book of life. Just wanted to let you know that you know. Read on. Verse thirteen. Mm. And the Lord God said unto the woman, mm. What is this that thou hast done? Wait, what do you say? What is this that thou hast done? God said, What is this that thou hast done? Read on. And the woman said, Uh oh. The serpent. The what? The serpent mm -hmm. beguiled me. The what? The serpent beguiled me. She said, The now she's like, Uh, uh it's that serpent. It's that wicked spirit, and you know that serpent is wicked because you created it. That's what we do. You, well, you know what? This brother right here. You know, yeah, yeah, I did have to spread on, but this brother right here, you, 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 you know, he done been in the books for that before. Really, it's his fault. It's his fault. So it don't deal with me. Um, it, the serpent me got me. But check this out. Jump up and read verse two. Verse two. Mm. And the woman said unto the serpent, mm. We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, mm. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, mm. God hath said, mm. Ye shall not eat of it, mm. neither shall ye touch it, lest what? Lest ye die. Lest ye die. Read on. And the serpent said unto the woman, mm. Ye shall not surely die. You see that? So she already knew God's laws. But guess what? When she transgressed, guess what? Now she got to throw the spirit under the bus. The spirit didn't make her do anything. The spirit didn't, didn't, didn't put a, a, a stone to her head and, and, and make her transgress God's laws. This spirit, all, all it did was talk to her. That's all it did. Jump down now. Read verse 13 again. Verse 13. Mm. And the man, I'm sorry, verse 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, mm. what is this that thou hast done? Mm. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me mm. and I did eat. The serpent tricked me. No, you, you wasn't tricked because you know what this Bible says. We like to uh, blame everybody else for us not doing what this Bible says. And guess what? Whenever correction comes our way, whenever rebuke comes our way, whenever any scolding comes our way, everybody around us is under the bus now. You, you better believe it. Read on. And the Lord God said unto the serpent. I want to show you something different now. Come on. Because thou hast done this, mm -hmm. thou art cursed above all cattle mm -hmm. and above every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, mm -hmm. and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, mm -hmm. and between thy seed and her seed. Mm -hmm. It shall bruise thy head, mm -hmm. and thou shalt bruise his feet. Read. Unto the woman he said. I will greatly multiply thy sorrow. So now he back to the woman again. That means the spiritual, the the, the spirit of Satan said nothing. The spirit of Satan didn't throw nobody under the bus. Ain't it, ain't it funny how um a, a spirit of a devil could take their correction 
and, and, and give no rebuttals, <laughs> but our people can't. You understand? Dang, we, we learn from the, the serpents. Hey, it, it is what it is. But meanwhile, Adam, he, he what? He threw his wife and the most high under the bus. Eve did what? Threw the serpent under the bus. When she knew the law, quoted the law verbatim, the same way it was given to her, the same way it was given to Adam. Satan get his, didn't say not a word. But we don't have that spirit on us to just take correction and say not a word. Because we so intelligent, we so smart. We, we know we can get out of this. We clever with words. We can we think we can escape correction. From the let's get um Exodus 14. Exodus 14. And I thought of verse 30. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 30. Mm -hmm. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. So this is how the Lord sent the ten plagues. And he said it's out of the hand of the Egyptians. Come on. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. What, what happened? And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. So Israel got saw nothing but dead bodies on the seashore. This is a heavy moment, right? Come on. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And the people feared the Lord. And after that great work that was done, after that great milestone, it says the people feared the Lord after that. Come on. And believed the Lord. And they believed the Lord, right? And his servant Moses. And they also trusted and believed in who the Lord set up, Moses. They said, you know what? Looking at this mighty work that got done, this is a wonderful accomplishment. This is a great feat in our history. They said, and because of that, guess what? Our faith was increased. And guess what? Our belief in this leader has also been increased based off of the mighty work that got done. All praises. Israel believed. Believed in the Most High. Believed in leadership, right? Now, let's jump two chapters over. Exodus 16. Let's start at verse 1. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And they took their journey from Elam, mm. and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, uh -huh. which is between Elam and Sinai, mm -hmm. on the 15th day of the second month mm -hmm. after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So th this, is the, this is the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt, right? So look, just jump ahead two months, right? Come on. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured. So read again. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured. The whole congregation of children of Israel murmured. The whole congregation, the same ones who just said, you know what? Wow, look, 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 look the dead bodies of the Egyptians. Man, all praise. I believe in the Most High. I got faith in them. I, and I believe in Elisha who got set up. Now, two months later, guess what? The whole congregation murmured. Read on. Against Moses and against, who? against Moses. Then they just have faith in Moses. They believed in Moses. Read on. And Aaron mm -hmm. in the wilderness. So they, they murmured. So read on. Watch this. And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died. What they say? Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt. They said, I wish that we would die in the land of Egypt. Read on. When we sat by the flesh pots. At, at least back when we had flesh in Egypt, it was nice in Egypt. Read on. And when we did eat bread to the full. We had bread in Egypt, which would have died in Egypt with our bellies full. Read on. But ye have brought us forth into this wilderness. Y'all brought us all the way out into this wilderness. Read. To kill this whole assembly with hunger. Y'all brought us out here to starve us to death. Y'all don't have our best interests at heart. Y'all don't have our best interests at heart. That's what we've discovered. The moment Israel gives vex, whether it be in their personal life, whether it be at work, they murder life, congregation, Israel get vexed, Israel lose faith, Israel don't believe in the Most High no more, or they wouldn't speak like this, Israel don't believe in leadership no more, and then Israel starts pointing the finger, you understand, and then Israel starts reminiscing on a old life back in the world, it was, it was better in the world, when I was so dumb I was calling myself black, it was better in the world, when I was so dumb I was calling myself mixed, like I was a puppy from, from a pound, it was better in the world, you start bugging out. The, mo the, the moment any 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 trial hits you, whether it be personal, marital, congregational, the moment those things hit, you know what? I'm vexed, and I'm out the spirit. But nobody says that. Instead of them saying, I'm vexed, and I'm out the spirit, I need to get in the spirit. I, I need some joy for this in my life. I need to give me the scriptures and be around sisters. I need to be around brothers. And instead of that, mm -mm. you know what? I don't think we should got, got, got our best intention to heart. They brought us out here to die of starvation. And you know what? Back in the world, I had flesh. I had bread to the full. I had everything. Why am I even here? Just so I can go through nonsense. It's always like this. 
It's a complete dismissal of the mighty work that has been done in, in the past. Israel got that spirit. What, what, what have you done for us lately? What have you done for us? Israel will completely dismiss all the work. And you know what that is? It's an open show of the hardness and evil in our people's hearts. That still lingers. That still lingers. These, these are the same people who saw the dead body of the Egyptians. Now, fast forward two months, they're like, you know what? Uh-uh. I forgot all about that. It don't even matter. The same man you believed in, the leech of the, the most I set up, on to hell with him. And to hell with the most high, both of them are working against us. Both of them are oppressing us. That's the spirit that Israel got. Jump over to chapter 17 and verse 1. Exodus chapter 17, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And all the congregation of the children of Israel journeyed from the wilderness of sin mm -hmm. after their journeys, mm -hmm. according to the commandment of the Lord, mm -hmm. and pitched in Rephidim. Mm -hmm. And there was no water for the people to drink. There was no water to drink in Rephidim. Come on. Wherefore, the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Mm -hmm. Wherefore do ye tempt the Lord? Mm -hmm. And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, mm -hmm. Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us? You said, You want us dead. You don't care about our life. The same leader that, that brought them forth, the Lord used him to send 10 plagues, brought them out, killed the firstborn, split the Red Sea. The same leader who did those mighty works. Now, the moment there is no water, the moment they're uncomfortable, now all of a sudden, you know what? We don't trust you. And you brought us out to kill us. You don't care about our life. That's the spirit that Israel got on. Read on. Thou has brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst. Uh -huh. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, mm -hmm. What shall I do unto this people? Mm -hmm. They'd be almost ready to stone me. So Israel, the congregation, is ready to kill Moses, one of our greatest leaders. A little bit, little, little bit of affliction, a little uncomfortable. They're about to get ready and stone Moses. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, mm -hmm. Go on before the people. And take with thee of the elders of Israel, and thy rod, wherewith thou smotest, smotest the river. Mm -hmm. Take in thine hand, and go. Mm -hmm. Behold, I will stand before thee there upon the rock of in Horeb, mm -hmm. and thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Mm -hmm. And he called the name of the place Massa mm -hmm. and Meribah. Mm -hmm. Because of the chiding of the children of Israel, right. and because they tempted the Lord, saying, mm -hmm. "Is the Lord among us or you, not?" You see that thing? So they were so quick to speak against Moses. Why? Because they they never had faith in the one true God. Israel Israel has a microwave faith. A lot of Israelites a microwave faith. They only have it when the work is being done. They only have it when there's a great accomplishment. They only have it when some when when Israel can see a sign and a wonder. That's why Israel always seek for a sign. And guess what? When, I, when, when there are no signs, when there are no wonders, and then some type, some affliction comes their way, they're a little uncomfortable. They're not in a perfect little comfort zone. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Israel's quick to speak against leadership. You want to know why? It's because they don't really believe in the Mosai. They don't have a really a solid foundation in the Mosai. A lot of y'all are here for, for uh, the wrong reason. And when you're here for the wrong reason, how can your faith be in the right place? Some of y'all are here for a husband. If you're here for a husband, how could your faith be in the right place? If you're here for a wife, how could your faith be in the right place with the Most High? That's why they said, is not the Lord among us or not? So it's easy for you to run your mouth against men who are over you. It's easy to run your mouth against a bishop or a deacon or a captain or an officer or whoever they may be, soldier, whatever the case may be. It's easy for you to do that. You want to know why? Because you don't really believe. And instead of you dealing with the fact that you don't believe and you need to ask the Lord to increase your faith, like the brother did in the time of Christ, instead of you dealing with that, you, you just start speaking evil with your lips. And that's because you don't even understand the Lord is actually among us and hears all your words. He hears your chiding. From there, let's get uh, numbers. Numbers 11. Numbers 11, and I started verse uh, 4. Numbers. Uh, Sister Montez, you can hold your uh, your comments till after class, and if you got a, if you have a serious question, then we can deal with your, deal with your question um, after the class. Numbers eleven. I start at verse uh, four. Numbers chapter eleven, verse four. Mm -hmm. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. What happened? And the mixed multitude that was among them mm -hmm. fell a lusting. So when we came out of Egypt, you had a mixed multitude 
of the heathens who ran out with us. We came out, they ran out after us, right? So it says, they fell a lust and they started running their mouth. Let's see what they were saying, come on. And the children of Israel also wept again mm -hmm. and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? Mm -hmm. We remember the fish we, which we did eat in Egypt freely, mm -hmm. the cucumbers and the melons mm -hmm. and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. So the mixed monks too, they full of lesson for what? For the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic that was in Egypt. They full of lesson for those things. So when they full of lesson, what did Israel do? Full of lesson and start complaining. They, they got that, that complaint about, we remember this that was in Egypt. We remember that that was in Egypt. How come we don't have this? How come we don't do that? How come you don't let us do this? They full of lesson right after the heathens full of lesson. Y'all know who the mixed monks is today? Other camps. You know what makes my today today? Facebook, public Israelite opinion. Y'all take that and y'all y'all run with it. And start running y'all mouth. They start running their mouth. Y'all go a lesson and start saying the same stuff in Israel. Y'all saying y'all start saying the same things. They go a lesson, you go a lesson. That's what happens. Read that verse again. Verse uh four. Four. Mm -hmm. Verse four. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, who shall give us flesh to eat? Mm -hmm. We remember the fish, which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Mm -hmm. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before mm -hmm. our eyes. And the manna was as coriander seed and the color thereof as the color of bedellium. Mm -hmm. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a So stop. So what are we showing? We showing that what? Every time Israel start running their mouth and go a lesson and speaking uh speaking quickly with their mouth uh of their own murmurings or disapprovals, uh whether it be uh of what's being taught or the leadership, where are they getting it from? They're getting it from public opinion. They're getting it from the mixed multitude. Say the mixed multitude is all those camps that's on your Facebook line. The same ones who come in here and cause confusion. Who's a mixed multitude? Instagram is a mixed multitude. Television is a mixed multitude. You understand? All those things, those same spirits jump on you, and then you go a lesson. And then you, you speak those things in your particular school. You speak those things on your Facebook posts. Because you want to be politically Israelite correct. And then you call it strife and confusion. That's what Israel do. Jump down to uh, verse uh, 6. Verse 6. But now our soul is dried away. Mm -hmm. There is nothing at all beside this manna. Beside what? This manna. They said beside this manna. So manna is angel's bread, bread from heaven. So Israel would sit in a, in a, in a place where you, you, you're receiving God's blessing and despise it. Why? Because of the thoughts of other camps. Because of the thoughts of confusion. The public Israelite opinion. You understand? You, you would completely despise God's blessing. Disregard it. You understand? And then you start to run your mouth again about the things that you don't have or things that we don't do. That's what Israel do. Oh, well, I don't know why. Are you sure God is doing this? I've watched this other camp and they don't have them doing that. That's what Israel do. You go a lusting. Jump down. Give me, um, give me verse 18. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And say thou unto the people, mm -hmm. sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And ye shall eat flesh, mm. but ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, mm. saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Mm. For it was well with us in Egypt. You see that? It was better back in the world. I did what I wanted back in the world. I didn't have all these problems. I ain't put up with this drama. This works in the Christian church. You want to learn no laws in the Christian church. You know, no nationality in the Christian church. You you surrounded by adulterers, fornicators, pedophiles. You know what goes down in the Christian church. But you'll come in here and speak great evil. And say it's just like the Christian church. And you don't, you don't know you the devil the Bible speaks of. I hope you know it today. Read that verse again. Verse 18. Mm -hmm. And say thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. Mm -hmm. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, mm -hmm. saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Mm -hmm. For it was well with us in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Mm -hmm. Ye shall not eat one day nor two days, mm. nor five days, neither 10 days, nor mm. 20 days, mm. but even a whole month until it come out at your nostrils mm -hmm. and it be loathsome unto you mm -hmm. because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you and have wept before him mm. saying, 
Why came we forth out of Egypt? Deep down, these spirits despise the one true God. At the core of it all, after the pointing of the finger, after the speaking much evil, deep down, when it's all said and done, they despise the Most High, they despise his laws. You understand? They, they despise the life of discipline. When it's all said and done, they despise the life where they, where, where they come into to the life knowing you got to what? Endure. You got to go through much affliction. Don't give up. With great suffering, show you into the kingdom. They despise that whole process. So when, when, when they get weak in the, in, in, the, in the faith and weak, they, instead of them just saying, you know what, hey, I'm weak. I'm weak. Can you help me? No, no, because great, great is the pride of Israel. So instead of that, you know what, I'm just tired of this and I'm tired of that. And how come we don't do this? And how come we should always what got us doing that? And why we got to read? What's up this four chapters a day thing? It's just too much going on. Instead of them just saying I'm weak in the faith, this might pray for me. Can somebody fast with me? Israel starts speaking great evil and they despise the one true God. When really the problem is really within themselves. But it's very, very easier to look out the window than it is to look into the mirror. You understand? I, I was watching um, uh, that when they see us, that, that wicked uh, attorney, Edomite, said something. She said, the eye sees but can't see itself. That's Israel. Israel is an eye that can see but can't see itself. That's Israel. From now, let's get Hebrews 3. Hebrews 3, let's start at verse 14. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 14. Mm. But we are made partakers of Christ mm. if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. So it says that we are made partakers with Christ if, if is a huge word. That's only two letters. Because it says you have to hold your confidence to the end. We all come in with great zeal. We come in with a spirit of charity and joy and love. We just love everybody. We want to be around everybody. Um, unity. When's the new moon coming? I want to be early. Give me a new garment made. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy this. And I'm gonna bring this. I'm gonna bring a cake. I'm gonna get new moon on it. You come in with that burning hot, fantastic four zero flame is on, right? But God says that that don't make you a partaker with Christ. It says the only way you are a partaker is if you hold that same zeal, that confidence, steadfast or to the end. That's what it says, and that's hard to do. That is very, very hard to do because. When you come in with that zeal, guess what? Over time, you think you've done something. You think you've arrived. And then you get comfortable. You think you get comfortable. People know you. People know your name. You understand? You, you may have done some honorable works. And you, you start smelling yourself, as parents we used to say. You understand? And then you, what? You don't really have the same zeal. You don't have the same respect for peace. So when you, when you, don't, when you fail to realize that unity is one of the most powerful things that we as a people could have in this truth. Because outside of this truth, there is no unity. Everybody is solo dolo, which is why we are so easily destroyed, conquered, pillaged, raped, wrongfully incarcerated. Is because we don't have unity. So they know that if they hurt one of us, they just hurt one of us. And it's them versus the one. But they know when we come together as a people and we stand for each other, whether it be uh, financially, whether it be um, uh, in the judicial system, we're not going to let Esau just come in and have his way with our people, you understand, who keep God's laws. So, but when you lose your zeal, um, and you and you lose that confidence that you have in this truth. You don't care about unity. You, you won't let things go. You'll create strife for yourself. You understand? You're not forgiving nobody. Not understanding that that forgiveness is is, is the the um, the link to unity. Without forgiveness, there is no unity, because we are not perfect people. We are people who are repenting, striving for perfection. So without forgiveness, how can we come together? If you hold to what I did to you last Tuesday to this Tuesday. If you hold what I did to you last Sabbath to this Sabbath, how can we be perfectly joined together when there's tension and strife and confusion amongst us? But remember, these things are not important to us. Why? Because we've lost our fire. We've lost our zeal. You, if you got offended your first week, you're like, oh, oh it's all right, brother. I'm not, it's not a big deal, brother. Oh, no, I'm, I'm just glad to be here. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just glad to be part of IUIC, all praises. And then over time, what? That confidence, that zeal, that, that zeal wears off. And you're like, no, who do you think he's talking to like that? He was talking to me. Now, he couldn't have been talking to me, surely. But you know who I am, what I've done. Now, all of a sudden, stuff stuff, stuff that you were weak at, you can't weak at no more. You understand? Th things that made you smile, they don't make you smile no more. It's, just, it's, it's the norm. It's, it's just like paying taxes. It's just, it's just some, some you got to do. I'm just going to come to the Sabbath and I just do this and that's my withholding. Read verse 15. Verse 15, mm. while it is said, mm. today, if you will hear his voice, mm. harden not your hearts 
as in the provocation. So it says, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. Remember we just read in verse 14. Um, our mission is to hold our confidence steadfast to the end. That's our mission, right? It says, um, and if we do that, we are partakers with Christ. Verse 15 says, while it is said today, if we will hear his voice, listen, humble down, and obey his voice, meditate therein. It says, harden not your hearts as in the day of provocation. So what were they hardened with? What does that mean? It says, harden not your hearts. How were they hardened? And what were they hardened with? Let's get Romans. Let's get Romans 1. Romans 1, and I start at verse 31. Let's get some things that hearts are hardened with. Come on. Romans chapter 1, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Without understanding. It says our people are hardened because they're without understanding. They don't understand that um, unity is most important. But in order for you to maintain unity, you have to know that it's important. And then when you know that unity is important, then you would do things like forgive your brother. You would do things like forgive your sister. You would do things like what? You would apply Matthew 18 in the spirit of gaining my brother because I need my brother. I'm going to go to Matthew 18. I'm, I'm not uh, using Matthew 18 as a, a cloak to go the hell off. You understand? I'm going to use Matthew 18 as a, a method for me to gain my sister, a method for me to gain whoever I've offended. You understand? So when we understand that unity is important, we have changed our spirit in the way we deal with our people in the congregation. But when our hearts is hardened, I'm going to show you the things that's in our hearts. We don't have understanding. Like I just gave a couple key little points on unity. But when your heart is hardened, you don't have to understand no unity. Read on. Covenant breakers. It says we are covenant breakers. We won't do anything that this Bible says. But then we turn around and then we ask for forgiveness. Read on. Without natural affection. It says without natural affection. Natural affection is I love this brother just because he is real. I love this sister just because she is real. That's natural affection. I love these children because they're my children. I love my brother because that's my brother. My sister, that's my, that's natural affection. It says we are without that. When our hearts are hardened, we know implacable. It says implacable. Can you you want to get implacable? Implacable. We went with that definition. Implacable. Mm -hmm. Unable to be placated. So click um the first one. It says unable to be placated. So use itself to define itself. So we're gonna get the first synonym. Go ahead. Unappeasable. It says unappeasable. Meaning you cannot be pleased. You cannot be satisfied. Read on. Not able to be pacified. You cannot be pacified. You cannot be soothed. Read on. Or, sa or satisfied. You cannot be satisfied. Like, many Israelites are hardened with that spirit. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what somebody does. It doesn't matter what class they go over. It doesn't matter what mighty works get done. Whether it, it, it be uh, the international waking up with the toy tribes. You got something else for us? Or just, uh, not to be not to be appeased, mm -hmm. mollified, mm -hmm. or pacified, mm -hmm. inexorable. Wow. So many times in Israel, this spirit is, is within us. You understand? Why? Because what's going on? Your heart is hardened. Why? Because you grieve in the spirit, you vexed in the spirit. And guess what? Th this trial of faith is weighing you down. So instead of you saying, you know what, this thing is weighing me down. I'm having problems at home with my husband, I'm having problems at home with my wife, I'm having problems with myself, I'm going through affliction. I'm not, I'm not problems with the congregation. I ain't at where I think I should be at. I'm not in an office I think I should be in. Instead of you saying those things, what you do is you say, you know what? You know what? You start speaking great evil. You speak, you speak evil to the congregation, the brother next to you, the sister next to you. You start, you, you want to throw people under the bus. You want to blame them for your own shortcomings. You want to blame uh, the bishop, the deacons for everything that happened in the congregation. That's what Israel like to do because they have a spirit that's what? That's implacable. You can never be soothed. You can never be pleased. A lot of y'all got that spirit on y'all. It don't matter the good that somebody do. The one evil they do, you can hold on to that. You hold on to that and, you, and you'll wish great evil upon them and you'll wish death upon them to a certain degree. Y'all know who y'all are. Um, give me um, verse 19. Verse 19. Jump back to Hebrews 3. Hebrews. Mm -hmm. Back to Hebrews 3. And let's read verse, um, let's read verse 19. So we dealt with a couple... Uh, couple of spirits when, when when the heart is hardened right so i'm gonna show you something hebrews 3 is back back to what we was at read uh read 15 again hebrews chapter 3 verse 15 mm -hmm. while it is said today if you will hear his voice mm -hmm. harden not your hearts mm -hmm. as in the provocation mm -hmm. jump down to verse 19 verse 19 because mm -hmm. we, we know the most i killed those people who harden their hearts in the wilderness or the day of the provocation so read 19 
So we see that they could not enter in. They, they could not enter into the Lord's rest, which was Israel. You understand? Today, the Lord's rest is what? The laws and the faith of Christ until well, our kingdom is established. But it says we see they could not enter in. Why? Because of disbelief. They could not enter because they don't believe. You said that because of what? Because of unbelief. So they don't believe. They don't believe in God. They don't believe in Christ. They don't believe in the coming kingdom. They don't believe in a self. And because of that, out of that, out of that spirit, that don't believe in God, don't believe in Christ, don't believe in the kingdom, don't believe in a self, how can they possibly care about unity? How can they possibly care about the coming forth of the kingdom when they don't even believe in the kingdom? They having a hard time seeing themselves in this Bible. They still, they still look in the mirror and believe they're African American. Some Israelites are just plain church. All right, so from them. Let's get uh, 1 Samuel. When, when you don't believe, and you have spirit of uh, unbelief, guess what? You would never be content, and you will forever be unruly. You won't be content, and you will be forever unruly. It will, all, it will always be a problem issuing out from you. Because we all know it. Guess what? We all are sick. It's a hospital. Christ said, I don't, I don't come for those. Who, give me that real quick in Luke 5. Give me Luke 5 and verse 31. Luke 5, verse 31. Luke chapter 5, verse 31. Mm. And Jesus answering said unto them, mm. they that are whole need not a physician. Christ, Christ is, is a chief doctor. He says, those of you who are whole, y'all don't need me. And if any of y'all any at home think y'all don't need Christ, you're going to die twice, plain and simple. So he says, they that are whole, you, you think you got it all figured out? You think you're perfect? Okay, well then you don't need Christ. Read on. But they that are sick. He says, but y'all who are sick, read. I came not. To call the righteous. I don't come to I, I didn't come for those who think they got it all figured out, think they are all righteous. Read on. But sinners. But those who are striving for perfection. Read. To repent it. That's why we we are all sinners repenting in the in the spirit of repentance and striving for perfection. That's what that's who we are. We are not those that are whole. We would like to be whole. We are not those that are all the way righteous. We would like to be all the way righteous. But some of y'all, y'all, y'all walk around with the spirit like you whole. Y'all walk around with the spirit like you all righteous. Therefore, anybody else to shortcome, oh, that, 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 that offends me. I, I can't believe this will happen. You know what? They're the reason I'm leaving. I'm leaving. You would never hold to begin with. But, but, but remember, the eye sees but can't see itself. You can see what's wrong with this man's marriage, but you can't deal with your own marriage. You got to deal with your marriage first. You can see what's wrong with this man and his lust, but you can't deal with your own lust first. You can see this man sloughiness, but what have you done for the congregation? You see the eye sees, but can't see itself. Let's get 1 Samuel 30. First Samuel 30, let's start at verse 1. First Samuel chapter 30 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south, mm -hmm. and Ziklag, and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire, mm -hmm. and he and sorry, and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any, either great or small, mm -hmm. but carried them away. So and David and his men went out to war. When they went out to war, the heathen came, the Amalekites, they came and they kidnapped the women and they kidnapped the children. You understand? So as of right now, guess what? The children are missing, the women are missing. We, and we at IUSC, we know what it's like to have a person, a sister that's missing. We, we know that all too well. You understand? So you, we, we can relate to this hurt that they must have felt. Read, read it from again. Read, read it from the top. First Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. one. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south mm -hmm. and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag, and burned it with fire, mm. and had taken the women captives mm. that were therein. Mm. They slew not any, either great or small, mm. but carried them away mm. and went on their way. So as of right now, the children are missing, and all the women are missing. Read on. So David and his men came to the city, mm. and behold, it was burned with fire, mm. and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Read. Then David and the people that were with him mm -hmm. lifted up their voice and wept. And what? And wept. It says, and they wept. You understand why? Their hearts went out for everybody who was missing. Read on. Until they had no more power to weep. That's a lot of weeping right there. 
They cry until they cannot weep anymore. Read on. And David's two wives were taken captives. What happened? And David's two wives were taken captives. David's two wives were taken captives. Both of them I have been snatched up. Both of them I'm missing. Come on. Ahinoam mm -hmm. and the Jezreelites mm -hmm. and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the and, Carmelite. And David loved them greatly. You understand? Um, Ahinoam, that was uh, Saul's old wife. Um, you know, she was beautiful. And then Abigail, that was wife of, of, of Nabal. That was one who came to meet David with, um, with food and nourishment when, when he was hiding from Saul. You understand? So um, both of them, they missing too. So read on. And David was greatly distressed. Now, David didn't care that they was missing. And David was greatly distressed. Read. For the people spake of stoning him. Hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Because last one I just read, they, they took the, the children. They took the women. But that David suffered loss as well. David wept right alongside of them. But what did the people do? Read that again. For the people spake of stoning him. They blame leadership. They blame David. David, this is all your fault. Even though you suffer loss right with us, this is your fault, David. This is the bishops of, of IUIC fault. It's y'all fault this person is missing. David, like, I, we all went to war together. We didn't know this was going to happen. Well, it, we going to stone you. That's what Israel does. Oh, something happened? Oh, no. We blame who was ever in charge. Out the spirit. Why? Because deep down, guess what? They never believed in the first place. What public opinion say? Public opinion say, blame who? What public opinion say? Blame who? Okay, so that's what we're going to blame then. Public opinion say, oh, they mad at IUSC? Oh, well, I'm mad at IUSC too. Ain't you with IUSC? Yeah, for right now. That's Israel today. That's Israel's spirit today. So now they missing. David suffered loss as well. But guess what? The people want to blame David. They speak a stone in him. Read on. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. Mm -hmm. But David encouraged himself. What did David have to do? But David encouraged himself mm -hmm. in the Lord his God. It says David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Like it, it was just him. When everybody turned your back on you, David been a great leader. They loved David since he killed Goliath. But now all of a sudden, what have you done for me lately? People I'm missing. What are you, David? Don't you know all things? You can give us Psalms 83, but you can't, you, you, you can't bring the, the, the sisters back. You can't bring the children's back. Read on. Verse 7. Mm. And David said to Abiathar the priest, mm. Ahimelech's son, mm. I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. Mm. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David. Mm -hmm. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Mm. Shall I overtake them? Mm. And he answered him, Pursue, mm. for thou shalt surely overtake them mm. and without fail recover all. So if they, would have, if they would have stoned David, would they have been able to recover all? No. But what do Israel do? Uh, some, some go wrong, you under the bus. Typically the first ones to go is those who've been laboring before you. Oh, it's their fault. You know what? Let's stone him. Oh, who cares that he delivered Israel out of the hand of the Philistines? we would all been slaves of the Philistines. Who cares about that? Oh, that's, that's old. That's old. Forget how monumental it was. It's old. Oh, forget forget when, when, when he went down to Ziglag and slew the Amalekites. Oh, that's old. That's old stuff right there. Forget that, that the Lord God anointed him king for the people of Israel's sake, as it says in 2 Samuel 5 and verse 10. Oh, that's old. All I know is that people are missing. And what are you doing, Dave? You know what? To hell with him. Let's kill him. That's the spirit that Israel got on him. That's the spirit right there. Let's get Job 2. Job 2, start of verse 10. Job chapter 2 and verse 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Jump up to uh, verse 9. Verse 9. Mm -hmm. Then said his wife unto him, mm -hmm. Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Mm -hmm. Curse God and die. So this is when Job suffered great loss. Job suffered great loss. The woman said, um, Do you still maintain your integrity? She said, Just curse God and die. To hell, to hell with the most high. Read on. But he said unto her, mm -hmm. Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. Read. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, mm -hmm. and shall we not receive evil? Read. And all this did not Job sin with his lips. It says, and all this Job never sinned. Job wants to say, he says, we shall not only receive good at the hand of the Lord, but we also going to receive evil. 
many of you, when y'all receive evil, it's everybody. It's, it's 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 not it's not the Most High doing maintaining the system that He put in place about us receiving good and evil. Oh no no no, it's my brother next to me fault that I'm going through this evil. That's who fault it is. You know, it's the sister next to me. It's her fault that I'm going through this evil. It's, no no no, it's not the fact that that's how this this whole system is wired. It's not that. It's not that we all have to go through trials. We all have to be pushed to our limits, and then our limit has to stretch. You understand? It's, it's not that at all. It's just, it, it's, uh, it's your fault. It's the sister fault. It's leadership fault. Because that's easier than growing in the spirit. You see, when, when, when you maintain your integrity, you look within yourself, like David did. David, it says David encouraged himself. David had, David, David lost his, his, his wives and children. People are thinking about putting him to death. He's like, you know what? I'll pray some more. So he had to encourage himself and stay in the spirit. Many Israelites don't know how to do that. So the moment I'm getting corrected, oh, I'm getting corrected. No, I'm about to correct you. You corrected me? No, I'm correcting you. Now we's equal. Matter of fact, David, I'm about to get ready and kill you. David, like, I ain't no, I ain't no, I ain't no, I'm like, no, no, you know what? Kill, kill David. To hell with him. This is a spirit that's, that's inside of us that's destructive inside the congregation. Because when, the, when, when, when afflictions come and they will come, when burdens come and they will come, when strife comes and they will come, Israel, Israel will magnify the wrong actions instead of simply applying the scriptures. Stay in the spirit. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And quiet the Lord. Go, go pray. Go fast. No, all, all those things require spiritual growth once you, once you complete those things. Israel ain't trying to grow spiritually. I just want to do things that I'm used to. I'm, I'm used to backbiting. I'm used to lying on people. I'm used to murmuring. I'm used to gossiping. Israel professionals at that. I'll just continue doing that. So when, 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 when I'm going through something, I'll just whisper about it. I'll just whisper about it in corners. I'll just murmur about it in corners. I'll just create strife. I'll, I'll just make a new schism. Are you correcting me? You, you're no longer part of my schism. My schism just got smaller. I used to have a schism of three, now I got a schism of two. I used to have a schism of seven, now I got a schism of two, a schism of four. That's what I just do. Are you, are, are you correcting me? Oh, oh. You said don't talk like that. Okay, I shouldn't talk like that. Okay, cool. You just not you you're no longer part of my clique or my schism. That's what Israel does. And, and, because anything else requires spiritual growth. Oh, you know what? I gotta train my mouth not to talk like that no more. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna train myself. Instead of doing that, Israel like, nah, I ain't correcting nothing. Person might get mad at me. Well, you know what? I I'll, I'll just hold on to what they did and then I'll just divulge it later once this person pissed me the hell off. That's what I do. You no, know, I'll wait to I wait to the captain come now. I'll let them know what the officer did last week. We cool right now. Buffalo Wild Wings yesterday. But when the captain comes, then I'll, I'll, I'll let them know. I'll, I'll air them out then at the right time. That's what Israel do. Let's get Sirach 11. Sirach 11. And I started verse 25. Sirach chapter 11, verse 25. Mm-hmm. In the day of prosperity, mm. there is a forgetfulness of affliction. Mm. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. So it says, in the day of prosperity, there's a forgiveness of affliction. In the day of affliction, there's a forgiveness of prosperity. That's that spirit of, what have you done for me lately? That's that spirit of, in the day of affliction, you, you don't remember when, when you and another individual's relationship prospered. You don't remember when... Um, what we all were Philly joined together like David and Jonathan. You, you don't remember those things. You don't remember when, when everything was going good, that we have Memphis, Milestone, Ghana, the word has been true, all praises. Then all of a sudden another camp speak evil of us. You're like, well, why are they speaking evil of us? And, and you get bugged out. That's what happens. Why? Because in the day of prosperity, you all for it. And then in the day of affliction, you, you can't remember nothing. You're like, what good works? What prophets? I ain't never seen no prophets. All I see is niggas. I ain't never seen nothing. Why? Because in the day of affliction, there's a forgiveness of the prosperity. It's a, it's a forgiveness of the momentous moments that the Lord God has wrought through us, like the same time it was in Exodus. The Lord killed the Egyptians, their bodies was on the shore. They said, all praise, we believe in the Most High. We believe in our leader, Moses. Israel got a little thirsty. Not thirsty enough to drop down. Not thirsty enough to pass out, thirsty enough to run their mouth so that they had to be in good health, to murmur as they was murmuring. But they say, you know what? 
I wish we had died in Egypt, man. I miss the fish, man. I miss the flesh pots. I miss the bread. We ate to the full. Egypt had the biggest fish. Yeah, y'all ain't commenting today. Y'all real quiet today. Y'all very, very quiet. I pray y'all examine yourselves. Now, give me uh, Deuteronomy 8. Deuteronomy 8, start at verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 1. Uh -huh. All the commandments which I command thee this day mm -hmm. shall ye observe to do, mm -hmm. that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Mm -hmm. And he humbled thee, and suffer thee to hunger. What did God do? And he humbled thee. It says God the one who humbled you. Read on. And suffer thee to hunger. And God made you hunger. Read on. And fed thee with manna. Read. Which thou knewest not. Mm -hmm. Neither did thy fathers know. Mm -hmm. That he might make thee know that man. I'm sorry. That he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. Mm -hmm. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord. So it says God humbled you. God suffered you to hunger. And he did those things, and he, he afflicted you by those things to see if you would apply the scriptures while you were going through it. It says that, that he would, may know, to let you know that man that, um, man did not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. So guess what? It's very, very easy to apply the scriptures when everything is going good. I, I, we are professionals of being in the spirit when life is going our way. Got the job you wanted, got that raise you wanted, got that bonus you wanted, that vacation is coming up, you got your you got your PTO, congregation is going down, Passover, all praises, my fees is paid, my hotel is booked, everything is good. You you ready to forgive all evils that happen against you. But the moment, guess what? Being afflicted at home, your husband, he been a little grumpy lately, your wife ain't, ain't, ain't the wife that, that, that she was when you first married her, or she going through it, she having struggling with kids. When those things start to burn up, then will you apply the scriptures? Many times, no, it's not time to apply scriptures. Now, now you start to what? Blame others for your own shortcomings. Now you, now you start to look out the window. Now you, you examine everybody but yourself now. When really, the Lord put you through these things so that he can prove what's in your heart. Reverse two again. The Lord doing these things to prove what is in your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. To what? To humble thee. To what? To humble thee. We forget that the Lord God put us through certain things to humble us. Israelites are a prideful people. A prideful people. Read on. And to prove thee. And to what? And to prove thee. So God is doing these things to prove us. To prove us. God wants to see what's in our mind. Read on. To know what was in thine heart. You see that? Because guess what? When you're going through affliction, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Then you will know. Because if you got faith, nothing, not, nothing physical can really take that faith away from you. When, when, when you're really in the spirit. But when you want to microwave spirits, when, you, when, when you're temporarily in the spirit, your spirit is under construction, you one of those spirits, the moment any affliction comes your way, oh yeah. You're going to speak great evil because you, you never were built up. And God, God put you through these things. So to, cause the thing, here's the thing. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't shocking the most high. Most I knew the end from the beginning, but what the Lord got to do because we so prideful and we have no humility, the Lord have to put us through certain things. And then when we act much evil and speak great evil, we get revealed to our own selves. The Lord got to put us in a situation where now we getting corrected. All, all the Lord God is doing is getting you to finally look into the mirror. Because we won't do it. We will avoid all the mirrors and look through all the windows. We will examine everything and everybody but ourselves. So when, so, so when you slip and fall into fornication, and then you get blasted and corrected and stood up, the Lord's revealing you to yourself. The Lord God sent prophets that told you to study to read four chapters. The Lord God sent prophets that told you to make sure you're studying, make sure you're around righteous people. The Lord God gave you the scripture that said, be continuing around godly men. And then you hung around with your old friends. You kept listening to uh, Love and Hip Hop or the new show that uh, Bishop showed us, uh, Marriage, Divorce, or whatever the case may be with Soldier Boy. You fed yourself with those things and then what? You slipped into fornication. So God, God put you through, through these things to humble you, to reveal you to yourself. 
But but guess what? Many times, even that ain't enough. Because the moment somebody uh, starts talking to you, the Spirit of the Lord is, is working through them. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to hear it at all. You start deflecting. It's the woman that thou gavest me. And then you scared me. Go to Eve. Oh, no. The serpent beyond me. The only person who took that correction like a champ was the spirit of Satan. Didn't say a word. Because what, what could you tell anybody who giving you a scripture? Oh, well, I feel like I'm going through suffering, and I don't feel like I deserve it. Okay, the scripture say when you go through suffering, if, you, if you're innocent, take it anyway. Oh, you don't like that scripture. Oh, okay. So, so I guess we're still using the black highlighter like Christians do. We had to examine ourselves. Let's get um, Sirach 14. Sirach 14. Start at verse 2. Sirach chapter 14 and verse 2. Mm. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him mm -hmm. and who is not fallen from his hope in the Lord. Many of us, our conscience have condemned us because we, because we, we know we're not where we should be in this walk. We know we're not the man we should be. We know we're not the woman that we should be. We know we're not the wife we should be. We're not the husband that we should be. We're not the, the, the spiritual brother that we should be. You understand? Many of us, our conscience um, have condemned us. And then once that happens, you are a ticking time bomb and you are like, and you are a cancer inside the body. You are, you, you are stage level three cancer. You understand? Inside the congregation. Why? Because your own conscience have, have condemned you. You don't really believe you get no kingdom. Sometimes you question whether there is a kingdom. Why? Because you're not in this Bible. You're not serious. You're only serious when everything is going good. You're only serious when you're being recognized. Read uh, two again. So Rock chapter 14, verse 2. Mm. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him mm. and who is not fallen from his hope in the Lord. Mm. So... The Bible says, blessed is he whose conscience has not condemned him. I'll give an example. Um, many of y'all, when y'all came in, y'all didn't understand the fullness of this journey. Y'all watched at home online. Y'all thought y'all were in the truth. Y'all were not in the truth. Um, and, you know, y'all watched at home. Y'all thought everything was good. You're like, I want to join. All praises. Been watching for five years. You come in day one. Guess what? That's day one. That's day one because you never had the third trial of faith. You completely overrode Leviticus 23. Convocation. You completely overrode that. Many of y'all were in the midst of fornication. Many of y'all were still smoking weed. Many of y'all were still selling drugs. Everybody got their own shoe. Just wear it. But you were not in the truth. Just plain and simple. It, it was nobody over you to correct you. How could you be in the truth when the, when the scriptures say you that the commandments are lamp, the law is light, and reproofs of instruction are the way of life? You got nobody to reprove or instruct you. How could you be in the truth? But I digress. But the point is, many of us, we come in, we had no idea what this walk was all about. We had no idea the things that we was going to go through. We had no idea the, the man who the Lord God was going to push you to be. The, the Lord God in the truth, he's pushing us to be a better man. The Lord in the truth, he's pushing us to be a better woman. We had no idea that was going to happen. A lot of us have never been pushed the way we've been pushed in his truth. We've, we've never experienced internally the, 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 the mental and psychological milestones that we've achieved in this truth. The Bible will make you hit certain milestones. And because of that, because, because we didn't know what to expect, you know, it's kind of like uh, you might sit back on the sideline, you, you, watching, uh, you watch somebody play basketball. You see LeBron, he catching alley-oops, he dunking, uh, Kobe Bryant, Stephen Curry, whatever the case may be, you watching them play. And you're like, wow, and you admire that thing. You admire the glory of it. Like, Dang, that thing's heavy. You might watch somebody run a marathon, 26.2 uh, 26 miles. Like, wow, 26.2 miles, and, and you and you amazed, and you admire that the glory of it. You understand? But you didn't realize the sacrifice that it took. Because you're just watching it. So when you watch at home, it's just like watching the sideline. You didn't realize they had to change their diet to be able to run 26.2 miles. To be able to catch the ball and dunk, throw it behind his back. You didn't realize he had to change the way he worked out or start working out. You didn't realize the mental preparation that it took. You didn't realize the mental milestones he had, he had to reach, the psychological breakthroughs that he had to face. To get to that man who he is, or that woman who he is, who can endure 26.2 miles, that physical turmoil on the body. To stay in that camp in the sun for 10 hours, that's physical turmoil on the body. You, you, you never counted those costs. So that's why you get so easily frustrated. That's why it's so easy for you to lose faith, because you never properly counted the cost. You don't come to the body as a baby and talk to somebody who's been around one year, two years as a child. You talk to them as a 30-year-old. You talk to them as a 40-year-old. Y'all equal. 
Yeah, oh, I've been watching at home for a long time. We, we, we equal. You talk, then I talk. You send me scripture, I'll send you scripture. And if anything goes wrong, I'm still going to blame you, though. If anything goes wrong, I'm still going to blame you because you were here before me and you should know better. That's Israel's spirit. Let's get Luke. Let's get Luke 14 and 26. Let's get Luke 14 and 26. Luke chapter 14 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. If any man come to me and hate not his father mm. and mother and wife and children mm. and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, mm. he cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me mm. cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. For which if of you intending to build a tower mm -hmm. sitteth not down first and counteth the cost. You see, because a tower is not something that you can do overnight. I don't care how many of our Ishkarite brothers you got. You ain't building a tower overnight. You understand? The word tower itself depicts that it is a hard work. You understand? The word tower itself depicts it's going to be super tall, skyscraper status. So it says, which of you intending to build a tower should have not down first and count up the cost? But many of you, y'all were not able to count the cost. You see, counting count the cost, you really can't do that when you're just watching at home. You really can't do it. You do that your first couple of weeks and months in the body. That's why we tell you not to break bread. We're giving you an opportunity. We're giving you the platform to count the cost. That's what we're doing. But when you come in as a 30, 21-year-old, 40-year-old, 50, 60-year-old, and you make yourself equal with men and women who have been here before you, who have already reached certain physical milestones, who may not be perfect, who may not be um, in the spirit of Christ as they would like to be, but I've reached certain mental states and psychological states and, and a certain level of faith that's unshakable. Not really much can shake their faith. Who have, who have got to that point where they've endured a certain number of years. They've been, they have a tenure, you know what I'm saying, that speaks for itself. But you, you don't come and talk to them and say, you know, what should I expect? What's the scariest thing? What should I look out for? Many of you don't come in like that. Majority of you don't come in like that. Majority of you come in like you got this thing all figured out because you got your fringes on. You sisters, y'all come in with y'all hair wrap, y'all nice flowing skirts. You, you think about this thing all figured out. So you don't come in as a child. And if you don't come in as a child, you can't count the cost. Um, read that verse again, whether you have sufficient. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth mm -hmm. not down first and counteth the cost, mm -hmm. whether he have sufficient to finish it? Mm -hmm. You know, less happily. After he hath laid the foundation mm -hmm. and is not able to finish it, mm -hmm. all that behold it begin to mock him, mm -hmm. saying, This man began to build mm -hmm. and was not able to finish. You see that? Read on. Or what king going to make war against another king mm -hmm. sitteth not down first and consulted whether he be able with 10,000 to meet him mm -hmm. that cometh against him with 20,000? You see that? So it's a personal assessment. Wow, am I able to do this? Yeah, sis, and marriage is going to be like this. Brother, and the congregation will be like this. Brother, when you at work, that's how you got to act. But many times, nobody came in like that. But I guarantee you, the moment somebody goes through affliction in this, in this congregation, the first thing they do is blame everybody around them. They turn into Adam. They turn into Eve. They turn into David's men. That's the very first thing that happens. They harden their hearts like those who's in the wilderness with Moses. They start speaking evil of Moses. Speaking evil, why? Because deep down they never count the cost. Deep down they never had a, a established faith. And that's the truth. And you can be fixed, you understand? But you have to examine yourself and start over and humble yourself. Because remember, there, there is no kingdom without it. Let's get Luke. I'm going to prove that to you. There is no kingdom without it. Luke 18. Luke 18, reverse... Um, let me see. That's good. Read Luke eighteen and seventeen. Luke chapter 18, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child mm -hmm. shall in no wise enter therein. Read it one more time. 
Luke chapter 18 and verse 17. Mm. Verily I say unto you, mm. whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. Many of you came in here as full-blown adults. Many of you came right to the door with your, with your thoughts, your questions and opinions. You understand? There's nothing wrong with your questions, but y'all came in with loaded questions. <laughs> you understand? That's not coming in as a child. Coming in with a loaded question. Coming in with suggestions on day two. Coming in with your opinions on day three. That's how many of y'all came in. And y'all those same spirits today, if nobody checked y'all. Or if when you got checked, you reflected and said, oh, it's your fault. Oh, I seen sister so-and-so. Oh, I watched one of the deacons' class, and I think it said something like this. Sister, I, I was in that same class. He didn't say that. Oh, well, I thought he said that. Y'all want to deflect, and y'all want to reach elsewhere. Try to throw others under the bus. Why? Because you, you didn't come in as a child. You came in as a full-blown adult. And you, th and, you, and you thought your way was good in your own eyes. You thought that you had it all figured out. You thought you were smart enough and clever enough to know how to operate in this truth. You disregarded those who labored before you. You just say, you know what? Guess what? I got it. But the moment anything happens, I'm going to leave all you. I see, I'm going to blame y'all. I'm going to say the whole congregation is wicked. Damn, but when you part of the congregation? Yeah, but y'all wicked. Y'all wicked because I'm leaving. Y'all wicked because I'm offended. Y'all uh, y'all wicked because I'm weak. Nobody says that. Nobody. I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting to hear that. Lord's will, I don't have to hear because I, I don't want somebody leaving and, and go out to the world and get devoured. But I have yet to hear it. I'm leaving because I'm wicked. Yet to hear it. I'm leaving because I got cut. Yet to hear it. Luke 21. And verse 16. Luke chapter 21. And verse 16. Mm -hmm. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents mm. and brethren mm. and kinfolks mm -hmm. and friends. Mm -hmm. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. The Bible says that we're going to be betrayed by parents, brethren, kinsfolks, friends. And some of us, they're going to cause us to get put to death. Read on. And ye shall be hated of all men mm -hmm. for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. But there shall not an hair of your head perish. Read. In your patience, mm. possess ye your soul. Possess ye your souls, no matter what trials and afflictions you're going through. Whether it be what? Uh, persecution, or whether you're just being reviled. Reviled, somebody just speaking evil of you. The Bible says, no matter what you're going through, possess your soul. Keep your wits. Harden not your hearts. You understand? Stay in the spirit. All right, Israel. So, I started off a little bit late. I know it's giving me a hard time. I do apologize. Threw me out twice. So I got to end the class there. Get ready to pick this cotton. Um, if y'all got any questions, um, y'all can actually send them to me if they pertain to this class in my email. Because I got to go. I pray y'all was edified by it. I'm about to get ready and head out. The cotton is calling, all right? Hey, most on Christ bless. I hope y'all meditate. I hope y'all glean something. Let's fix ourselves, all right? James 1.16. Shalom.